very good morning to uh, everyone. Uh, so I'll be driving you through the Berlin training session with MindMassics. Uh, so I will start with the uh, company's uh, profile and uh, moving on to, I'll, I'll start giving introduction about myself and the course curriculum, which you'll be going to take it up. About myself, I'm a product development engineer. Uh, been working with uh, Golang for about five years, focused on back end, back -end technologies like uh, Docker and Kubernetes. All, all also like uh, been working with AWS and GCP, uh, all the cloud native environment as well. So I've been working as a product development engineer in the telecom domain, and also I've been consulting for a few of the uh, open source projects and as well as the, the products as well. The scope of the demo, so what what, what you're going to go uh, get uh, with this demo is uh, why Golang. So as you uh, got to know, like we are uh, driving through the Golang, Go programming language or Golang. So we'll be giving you, uh, giving you the uh, why Golang and its application in the market and uh, what are the use cases, what problem does Go solves and uh, stuff like that. And also, we'll be driving you through the types and variables that are available in Golang and the functions for a short note. The entire curriculum, uh, the entire course curriculum is as follows. Like, what are the stuff you'll be learning it with the entire uh, training session? So what are the fields and projects you're going to work with? Everything will be uh, followed as, as we go through the demo session. So starting from a, uh, starting from a note, like why Go? So as you all know, like uh, uh, Go is a fast growing programming language around the market. Uh, so for, it's been around like a decade. Uh, we have been uh, transforming all the backend, uh, uh, backend products in Go. So it, it has been like, uh, you know, uh, it, it's been replacing all those uh, traditional programming languages like Java, Python, and uh, at, at some point of time, uh, they, uh, at some point of time, the industry leaders are adopting Go in their uh, uh, products and uh, platforms. So uh, why, why Go? So why, why, uh, why is the necessity of a Go in a modern, a modern programming world? So Go is an open source programming language. Anybody can uh, contribute to the Go. So it is written in C completely. So you can get the source code of Go easily at the, at the GitHub and you can uh, go through the uh, Golang uh, source code written. And it is completely concurrent. A concurrent programming language is in the space, right? Uh, you would be achieving a multi-threading um, multi-threading concept with a single core machine, like uh, concurrent programming execution. It is also parallel, but uh, it is also uh, parallel in execution, but uh, the main focus of Go is concurrent programming language. And uh, yeah, it's garbage collected. So as you all know, uh, garbage collection is a main, uh, a main motive of a programming language. When you move on to the higher level programming language, you have to be, uh, you know, uh, clearing up the memory and uh, it has to be memory efficient and uh, stuff like that. So it is, it is garbage collected and scalable and efficient. Uh, the, these are the common terms you uh, get to know or get to know when you read a programming language. It is efficient and scalable. And yeah, yep, yeah, it is simple. It is simple to write a Go code as simple as that. You can start kickstart with a Go code easily. So let's let's dig into the history of Golang. Uh, so how how it has been uh, into the market. So design begin uh, uh, design began at late uh, 2007 in Google Laboratories. So begin open source in November 2009. So since November 2009, it's a, uh, it's an open source programming language, and where you can download the source code and look into it. And uh, today's version is <clears throat> today's version is 1.2.2, but uh, still like we we got like uh, 15 uh, 15 and 17 as well in the market. Uh, so that's been a typo here. So you can you know. Uh, Apologies for that. So today's version, we have like uh, 17 in the market, 1.7, uh, 17 in the market. So the key players is like uh, Ian Lance Taylor, Russ Cox, you know, like Lance Taylor, right? GCC and Russ Cox, CSP or Robert Kreismer, 
hotspot jvm uh, guy the rob pi the unix guy who has uh, contributed to the unix and uh, system and kenneth thompson uh, b or c lang uh, b c lang uh, developer and then uh, utf8 uh, constraint so ken thompson uh, as you all know the pioneer of computer science uh, scientist he's been working with uh, b and c lang and also the unix uh, unix operating system and also the utf8 uh, utf8 standard standard for the strings so these are the key players i mean pioneers in the computer science engineering uh, field they have contributed to the golang programming uh, so next is like what problem does go solves it, it, it is basically designed by google to help solve google's problem right so uh, google has a complex problem like uh, building building uh, zillions of machines uh, putting into the production environment and uh, they've been writing trillions of codes to manage their search engines and their servers and then their cloud products and everything so they have been using uh, c++ for the servers and uh, a lot of java and python as you all know like uh, java c++ is very complex in maintaining the code and writing the stuff and interpreting though though considered of its performance and stuff you have to write n number n number of lines of codes to you know get an action for a c++ to mm -hmm. uh, to do the magic in so in the environment of servers or gaming industry or whatever whatever the industry you've been using c++ and uh, as well as you know all about java right java java runs on a jvm machine uh, as you all know like uh, jvm as a complex uh, it, it itself uh, occupies uh, occupies a huge lot of memory so again you put a java code on top of it and run it so there's been uh, some of the complex problems uh, they were trying to solve it so go comes in action to solve all those problems in uh, all those problems in google's environment they they want to have build a language as as faster than c as as compare as you have to easy easily write the code uh, when it comes to the modern programming languages and hence uh, the go programming language was born so the reason the main reason go uh, was introduced in the market is like uh, introduced in go uh, introduced in google's environment is to eliminate the slowness and the clumsiness of the code they don't want a clumsiness code uh, uh, code in in the in which they write it up and then it, it is very easy to uh, uh, improvise the existing code and maintain it and, and to scale uh, and scale to uh, you know uh, to the uh, uh, to the benchmark what they have set so who, who what what is the main focus of go is it is designed by uh, and for the people who write and read maintain large software systems so so the people who write large number of software systems they they use go more in their environment so yeah so let me let me put out uh, most of the examples i mean like most of the products that have been using go uh, in their the games uh, games cloud dairy products uh, as you all know like docker docker is written purely in go and kubernetes kubernetes is also the a container orchestration which is written in go and youtube is using go for their some of their streaming services and google uses their go in search engine and some of their google products for building their backend amazon is using go in some of the aws services to achieve the virtualization and stuff nokia is been using go for around uh, for building their telecom network with uh, 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 with replacing their uh, traditional c++ <clears throat> and c mozilla as you all know uh, they are uh, foundation of the founders of rustlang has been using go as well the canonical canonical team the ubuntu uh, founders of ubuntu have been using go as well so these are the some of the giants that have been adopted go in their uh, production environment and successfully running their products okay as you all know like uh, this course outline will consist of uh, i've been covering you uh, three topics in demo and uh, the, the entire course outline uh, as follows like we'll be starting with the uh, go use cases and types and variables packages functions arrays and slices vari functions pointers structures methods interfaces concurrency object oriented programming in go 
error handling, reflection, and real-world applications in Go. We'll be at the end of the session. We'll be building some of the real-world applications like HTTP servers and applications like Docker, command line applications, and stuff like that. So, what are the add-on topics uh, we are going to cover? Is like as I said, we are going to cover some of the sample web application, database connection. And then we'll be using, uh, we'll be connecting with the database, and then we'll be, uh, uh, we'll be putting some of the data uh, with our application. And then the dependency management, uh, how you're going to manage the, the third party libraries, which you're going to import in our uh, product project, and then the project management, how you're going to write a clean code and go. So uh, for the ease of course, uh, uh, through the course, I, I have created a uh, GitHub repository for you guys uh, to go through this uh, uh, GitHub repository uh, to get the insights of the code which I've been sharing with you, and as well as uh, the golang.org slash doc has a documentation and stuff for as well as it has very huge um, document contributor with respect to all the concepts and go can go through it. Projects which we're gonna take it up is command line application like Docker. So we'll be building a command line application. Uh, as, uh, as I said, like uh, uh, Docker is a command line application, and then uh, student management web application. So like, uh, we create uh, uh, a HTTP web application with Go, uh, connecting with the database. Uh, so you'll be able to create a student and put some roles and responsibilities, and then to uh, manage a student and stuff like that. So we'll be driving it through that. The lab setup. Uh, so lab setup requires around you know a high speed internet connection, um, uh, as well as yeah, a desktop or a laptop, whatever uh, whatever you have it. The system requirements. I suggest um, to use Linux if you are already have a Macintosh. That is totally fine, no worries. But uh, I will not recommend Windows because uh, Windows is something clumsy for setting up. Uh, setting up the um, Golang and that stuff, but you can use it. That's not a problem. But uh, the, the the memory and uh, CPU, you can have uh, one core is fine, two core is fine, uh, n number of cores is also fine. The memory is uh, recommended memory is 16 GB, and also the 500 GB uh, 500 GB hard disk. So mock interviews like after completion of this course, we conduct a mock interviews to the participants who wants to evaluate themselves before applying for the job. To understand the knowledge gap, like you take up the interview and then we ask a series of questions what, what the industry expects from you as a Golang developer. So you'll be, uh, uh, you'll be taught with uh, a few of the, uh, few of the constraints, a few of the, uh, a few of the elements which are, which are need to uh, uh, accomplish the, in the uh, crack the interview in the market as well. So certifications, uh, with the Golang, you don't have any specific certification. It is very open source. It's not like a Java or any other programming languages, which is close, like uh, Microsoft, uh, C Sharp or anything. You don't have any specific certification specified by the Go developers. But uh, some of the Linux Foundation certificates, like uh, a certified Kubernetes administrator and Kubernetes developer requires Go knowledge to clear it. So Go is the fundamental of uh, clearing this Docker and Kubernetes certification provided by Linux Foundation. And some of the le learning platforms like Edureka and Coursera have their certifications as well. So you can enroll it and, and register for their exams and clear it. So at the end of the course, you will be given the course completion and uh, a certificate of uh, achievement for completing this course uh, signed by our directors. Uh, so you will get this uh, certificate online. So before uh, before ending up this, uh, I would like to uh, start with uh, the demo uh, of this uh, Golang project, which uh, uh, which any any programming language would be. So I'm gonna sh share you the sample snippets which I've been created. So uh, as you all know, like uh, we have covered like why go and why go in the market and stuff like that. We're gonna jump into the types and variables uh, which we already have it right. So what is a type in Golang? A type, a type is similar like uh, Go evolves around the Go programming language evolves around the type, right? So whenever you declare a variable, you have to declare a type. So that that is what um, uh, Golang suggested. So it is statically, uh, it is very, um, it is statically typed uh, programming language. So I'm going to share you the snippet. Uh, 
So, so it'll be uh, it'll be explained in detail about the yeah you know, about the uh, the whole Golang environment setup in the uh, in the training session. So right now I'm gonna uh, focus you on about uh, uh, writing a simple Go Golang programming uh, Go Golang program. So anyway, when you start with a new programming language, you'll be uh, starting with a Hello World program, right? So you'll be writing a Hello World simple Hello World program that prints the that prints Hello World and uh, Hello World in your uh, in your console or whatever, whatever you, whenever, wherever you run your program, right? I'm gonna give you, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna uh, teach you or uh, go through this uh, program. So this uh, starts with the package main. So what does a package main suggest? And uh, well, this is an import statement, and this is the main program. So uh, as you all aware of a uh, main function in the C, uh, C language, the same way uh, Go programming language also executes it. So uh, the, uh, whenever you run a program, say for example, you have to run a program with go run main.go or go run whatever the name you uh, uh, you do it, you give it .go, it search for a main function and it has to be in a main package. So when, when, when it finds the, when it matches the main uh, package and main function, it executes from the line one. So how this program executes? So whenever this program starts, it, it, it searches for a main function and uh, whatever the whatever the line you um, you given inside the main function will execute uh, sequentially. So for example, here we have given fmt dot hello world. So what is this fmt? Fmt is a format package which is inbuilt available in GoLang. You you give a fmt package uh, import uh, followed by the import statement. So whenever you import this package, right? Uh, so you'll be importing it at the top of it or top of the program below the main package below the package, package keyword. So import all these keywords will be a bit weird to you, but but uh, you you gotta uh, just listen it. And going on, uh, following, uh, following through the classes, following through the session, I'll be explaining you how this package works, how this import statement works, how this function works and, and, and stuff like that. Okay, so simple, uh, simple thing. When you run this program, right? Uh, so when, whenever, you, whenever you run this program, you have to uh, have a setup in your machine, right? So once all your GoLang setup is done, then you give uh, go run um, whatever this uh, hello world, right? Hello world main dot go. What is that? Hello world dot go. Hello world. It it basically prints the hello world hello world message. So whatever the message it gives here, right? So whatever message, what message? It's gonna print you whatever the message you give uh, inside this. So basically, how this program works is right. It searches for the main function, and whenever the main function starts, it starts executing sequentially. So println is same as that of a printf statement with a new line. So it, it, it gives you, it prints whatever the whatever the message you give inside a println function. Right. So then, what is the variable in Go? So what, what, whether it is, it may be a programming domain, you, I hope everybody uh, is from programming domain. So what is a variable? Variable is something like it holds, uh, it holds a value, right? So, so Go has a specific type to constraint. So as you all know from the previous program, you have this uh, uh, variable, right? Uh, uh, as you all know, this is a main function and the uh, variable has to be declared with a type, right? So it has to be declared with a predefined type. So variable with the uh, str, str is again a variable and also string, string is a type of a variable. Uh, there are few different uh, few uh, types inbuilt types that has been supported by Go. What uh, which other programming languages support is uh, right a string, integer, character, float, and then boolean. Yeah, you got boolean as well. So yeah, so whenever uh, so this is a type of a declaration uh, which you have to do it to declare a variable. So this is a string. String comes with a string declaration, and then integer comes with the integer declaration. Floating point comes with the floating point declaration. 
So what happens when you wrongly declare a type and then what, when you wrongly assign a variable to it? Exactly. Go, will, Go has a compiler, compiler programming language, right? So it will throw you uh, throw you the error at the compiler time itself, right? So if, if, say, for example, this, uh, this I have been giving a string, right? Uh, so I've, I've been giving a number to it and saving it and trying to run the program. So let's see what, what the compiler does is. Gonna throw you where so cannot use eight eight three four eight three four as type untyped begin as a type string in the assignment. So this is something like a type string. So you have to put it in the double quotes. So whenever you declare it as string, you have to declare it in a double quotes and also you can declare it with the single quotes that will be as follows at the time. And also integer, integer you have uh, integer in thirty two in in sixty four. Uh, in thirty two and in sixty four are based on the machines. And uh, float has float 32 and float 64 as well. So if you simply give int, it will directly take the machine's uh, CPU architecture and then it will assign to it. Okay. So you can also declare a variable in the multiple uh, multiple declaration. Say for example, here I've been uh, doing it as an employee of type int and then I'm declaring it as a file. And then uh, I'm declaring first name and last name with a multiple single line declaration. Is also possible in Go. So when you run this program, it gonna throw you, it gonna print you the employee first name and last name. So five Padmanabhan and Madhu. And then a multi int. So say for example, Go supports a shorthand uh, declaration as well. So I want you to focus on this line. So there is a declaration called as a colon equal to. So what does it actually mean? It actually means that you are declaring variables on the flow, right? So you're declaring variable on the flow. Uh, so you can declare as it is with a multiple declaration as well. So what is a type inference in Go? Type inference, uh, type inference function is, uh, type inference is something like you declare a variable keyword and the compiler assigns its type on the runtime. So say for example, this, this is of type hello. Hello is of type integer since you declare 45 as a number to it. And then same similar way of multiple uh, multi multiple declaration. There is multiple inference as well. So when you declare a variable with multiple variables, you are gonna assign the type on the runtime. That is also possible. And then default values, default values for the variable, default values for the variable is also possible. So say for example, the compiler puts puts the default value for all these variables at the runtime itself. So the default value for a string is an empty uh, empty string and variable of integer is of zero and floating point is 0, 0.0 and variable of bool is false. So let me uh, let me run you this program and see what are the expected outputs. So name one is of type string and then name two of type string integer and floating point number and then the default values the default values when you put the values over it the variable string is of an empty string empty space and variable int of zero floating point is 0 0.000 and variable boolean as false as expected there is something called as a byte and a room so Go has a special character, a special uh, character, or a special uh, a special data type called as a rune. So rune is something like uh, uh, Golang uh, introduced it to hold the special characters in Golang. All right. So when you run this program, uh, so So here you go. So when you declare a byte, it is of type of a character. So you hold a single character and say a byte, and then um, uh, and then it prints 97. So what does 97 mean? It is a Unicode of that byte. And then um, the character is a and the and the integer representation, the integer 32 representation of 97. 
similarly for the view character as well. Numeric operations. You can do direct numeric operations. Say, for example, you do it in an interpreter programming language, like in Python, you open the shell and do the program and do the uh, do the numeric operation on the go. Similarly, you can do the numeric operation in uh, Golang as well on the fly. So similarly, this this will hold the value of four and five, and then this will do the arithmetic operation. And uh, A plus plus is increment by one, and B plus ten is equal to increment by ten. So this is an XOR bitwise operator. So I want you to go through uh, more about the documentation uh, to understand more about the math math function as well. It has been available in the Golang document, so you can go through it. So similarly, the numeric uh, numeric types which have been uh, introduced. So I want you to focus you focus you on here. So there is some uh, some type as integer eight to uh, unsigned integer float thirty two. So what does that integer eight? Uh, uh, what does that integer eight uh, declares? So integer eight is something. Uh, so this this integer eight has an eight bit integer, eight bit uh, signed integer. Uh, the range varies, right? Uh, so wherever uh, wherever the range of the integer varies from minus one twenty eight to one twenty seven, you can assign any any number between minus one twenty eight to one twenty seven. And similarly, they have integer sixteen, integer thirty two, and integer sixty four. Sixteen bit, thirty two bit, and sixty four bit integers. Different uh, uh, differentiation on the range uh, range of it. So what is this unsigned integer? Unsigned integer is capable of holding only the unsigned values, so it cannot go to the negative values as well. So just similarly, when I run this program, uh, so it can you know, print me, you know, print me the 97,200, uh, uh, 500, 4.5, uh, whatever, 0, and 9.12 as well, the floating point number as well. So these these are the numeric types which are available in uh, Go. All right. So moving on to the next uh, next part of the session, it is a function. So wherever you go with a programming language, uh, you got a function, right? So what what does a function does? A function is something that does its work, right? Uh, so, so what is a fun? Uh, so, in real world, uh, you declare it as a function, and then you put it, put it inside of your program. So, you it does the specific job for you. It computes and gives you some values as well, right? So, so what does this function execute? So, how to write a function, simple function in a Go line? So, it has to be start with a fun keyword. So, this is a keyword for a function, and this is a simple function. And it has to be uh, with an open close curly brace, <coughs> open close braces, and with the curly braces as well. So inside this curly braces, here you go. This is a function definition. You gotta write all your function definition inside it. So whatever the function definition, you can write up. You can even write. Uh, you can even write uh, the math computing computation inside it. Whatever function. So this is uh, some more a bit a tweak in the function keyword. So here we declare a function. With the input parameter and the return type. So here there is an input parameter. So here x is of type integer. So wherever you go, you have to declare a type inside a Go programming language. So I do some of the math computation here and then I return even or odd with this function, right? So also this add nums. Add nums will take multiple parameters. You also can declare a function with the multiple parameters separated by comma. So here is of I, this x, y, z is of type same type, so I declared it as a integer. You can declare it as any type, right? So say for example, x, y of type string. So what does it mean? So x, y will become string, and then z will become uh, integer. So for now, so when you execute this program, what what you will get it as output? You will you will get this parse line executed. And the second line will be the uh, even or odd computation, and the third line will be adding of three numbers. So it will add and return you, right? So this is the simple uh, simple example of the function. So guys, so what exactly this does? So what the, what this uh, is a function? So you declare a function, and then you assign to a variable, and then you can call it 
with that itself. So k becomes now a function as well. And also there is something called anonymous. So this this block is something like assigning a function to a variable. And also there is something called as an anonymous function, a function called by itself. You write a function here, and then you you declare whatever the thing. So at the runtime, what what this Go compiler does is, so it will execute the Go, uh, it will execute the anonymous function. So this is a keyword for calling a function, right? So you have to do it at the end of the function. So I'm gonna execute this. There you go, you get anonymous function. Ignore this for now. This is how the, the function uh, function gets executed. I uh, hope that is the end of the demo session. Uh, hope uh, I'll see you all again in, uh, in the future class. All right, so that's the end of the demo session. So thank you for attending all, uh, attending the demo. So please uh, share your feedback if any, or uh, if I want to improvise anything on my part. And let hope hope you all uh, meet you with the feature class as well. Thank you.